Oh my, oh my, oh my, and oh my, I am now here. I'm hoping you can see me, I'm hoping you can hear me, and I'm hoping that uh, <laughs> this wasn't in the script. It says it's waiting for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Unbelievable. Apparently, YouTube hasn't figured out what's going on. Can you see or hear me at this point? Hmm. Let me check the comments. Let's see here. Oh my. <clears throat> well, there's obviously a lag while I was trying to get this thing going. Um, sorry about that. Welcome to the live stream. <laughs> Y'all can hear me. <clears throat> You can see me. I can hear you just fine. I had to turn the volume up, but I can hear you. Let me move the mic closer. There we go. Okay. Well, welcome. Welcome to the almost what didn't happen live stream. YouTube was messing with me really bad, um, disconnecting me, connecting me, telling them I didn't have a good live stream and all that other stuff. So sorry for wasting the last whatever it was nine minutes of your time let me just check the comments real quick and we'll get right into it uh let's see worth it or not hey man tapping pencil on desk let's take a look at this finally made it after the last few tick tock <laughs> hey frizzlev frizzlev film hey man how's it going wiki show <clears throat> cool uh, pedantic Dan never watched one before. We almost didn't. Then we went live. Then we went live. Then we went live. Yay. I thought it fell asleep. You can hear me. Yes, sir. Ah, Glenn from London. Hello, sir. You can hear me. Had to turn the volume up. Hello from Detroit. Hey, man. Hello, Detroit. I've been there. Nice town. Okay. So. We're going to get into it. This was, uh, I had all sorts of cool stuff planned. Obviously, I need more practice on my uh, live streaming and stuff like that. Um, wow, there's a shadow in my face, isn't there? <laughs> I need more equipment or more gear or something to do this. I need more practice. We're going to cover um, 
any questions that someone has about YouTube or any questions someone has about making videos. Remember, it's the Basic Filmmaker channel. I try and keep it real basic. Um, so we're going to go with it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip through a couple of the questions I had. Uh, people sent me emails. I know I didn't give people a lot of time to respond. I promise I will do that next week. Uh, let's just rip into some of these questions real quick. All right, the first question we have is from a couple friends here. Uh, we have, I won't be able to join you live 10 p.m. here in Britain. Mrs. C would not approve, but we'll catch up. I do have a filmmaking question. If I make a quick vid using my iPhone and use an external mic, the variable frame rate can cause lip sync to drift. That's true. Any tips? Loads of people make quick vids using phones, but the hassle of detaching audio, chopping up the track, and resyncing is stopping me. I get that. I believe that apps like Filmic cannot fix frame rate. I doubt the answer is hardware or software specific, but it happened to me using a Samson Meteor mic. I don't even know what that is. With an iPhone, and I edit on Final Cut Pro X. And that's from Mike. Hey, Mike up man okay well there's a couple of things to take into account here I don't know about the new iPhones I have the iPhone 8 plus X gold platinum I don't know what it is um, here's what you're running into it doesn't mean that you're gonna run into this in all cases on all phones I'm just talking about the iPhone and what I've experienced what happens is no matter what most people tell you um, the iPhone records at a variable bit rate. Now, what does that mean? That means um, 16 uh, megabits per second. It's not sitting there doing this and going linear, linear, linear. It's messing around and it's making things smaller and bigger so it can record all the data it wants to record. And what happens is the audio comes in and it gets a bit out of sync. You can go in and do tweaks in Premiere Pro, I think you use, you use Final Cut. There are tweaks in there you can do, you can move things around. The simplest solution I found so far, and maybe someone has a better solution in the comments, um, is to download a free program called Handbrake. You bring your variable bit video into Handbrake, you export it out as a constant bit rate video and all is happy and good so it doesn't matter whether you record it for 30 minutes or three hours or whatever it is if you have a phone that big it makes everything better you can also go in and then sync up your uh, separate audio if you record it separately um, using that but that's the problem you're running into there may be other instances other phones other things happening but with your particular phone and what you're experiencing that's what's happening there's this variable a bit rate occurring you just download handbrake go export it as a constant bit rate I'm not going to go into that right now and uh, on how to do that maybe I'll make a video on that and then it'll sell over here uh, doo -doo -doo, oh my audio was low audio is low let me turn it up I am going to turn the audio up and hopefully I don't blow anybody's brains out all right there you go I turn the audio up in my Headphones, I'm yelling at myself. Do 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 do. Had to turn the volume up. Detroit, not living there. Do do do. Look at my old neighborhood. Had the same issues with doing live streaming as telling my stream was offline than online. I just, it's just a normal issue. I've done over 5,000 hours and the issue never went away. 5,000 hours. Captain Jack, dude, wow. Holy smokes. Devastated. Truth. Okay, so I hope that answers the first question uh, from Mike. Let me go on to the second question. The second question I got, which I'll do a little demo for. I'm, I'm glad I got some questions up front. Hi, Kevin. I am enjoying the YouTube course. Thanks, man. I did have a question. You had a module about speaking errors and using jump cuts, zoom in and out, and B-roll, etc., to cover up speaking errors. Could you talk a bit more on that in today's stream? 
My question is, how do you keep your jump cuts looking so connected, meaning your hand position and face position hardly move when you do your jump cuts? I seem to be doing something wrong since mine look really disjointed. Rob. Hey, thanks, Rob. Well, let's take a look at this. First, again, it's the Basic Filmmaker channel, so uh, I'm going to explain this stuff. So a jump cut, I made a video on this a while ago, but I'll show you how to do that pretty simply in here. Um, jump cuts, you'll see these videos where now it's okay in YouTube where you're going along and then it cuts to something and then it cuts to another and then it and then they cut around. They just go through and they chop their video up. Uh, jump cuts are where you zoom in or zoom out and what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it look like without killing the viewer make it look like there's another camera that's closer um, and what it does is it takes out these long pauses like if I'm talking and I go today I want to present today I want to present my coffee cup And I'll show you how to make this coffee better. If you do a video like that for your viewers, a lot of them are just going to blow their brains out because there's too much space. So let me show you jump cuts. Um, let me look over here and check the comments so I don't get too far back. Do do. I had the same idea. We're doing it. Yeah, Captain Jack, dude. I'm just 5,000 hours crazy. Um, this is Tim Dowd on Facebook. Greetings from the island of Tenerife. Hey, Tim. Hi, dude. So let's take a look at this real quick. I'm not going to play audio, boy. I have this thing going. I'll turn up the sound. It's probably going to... Yeah, it's probably going to sound bad. So I'm going along and I'm talking in this video. Now let's say we're going to um, we're going to jump cut here. Um, there's a number of ways to do it. So I'm going to cut here. I'm not going to go into this. First, I'm just going to cut this, move this over, cut this, move this over. This is how people normally cut on YouTube. It seems to be okay. You're this the day of hell for me. Now it says OBS Studio is reconnected. Oh my goodness gracious. So apparently it disconnected and reconnected. So let me go through this again in case uh, something bad happened. Wow, I have never had these problems before. So we're in Premiere Pro. Don't worry about the editor. Doesn't matter. Um, this is what a jump cut looks like. See, I'm just cutting. Boom, boom, and I'm just cutting. Now, to do these zooms, I simply go here, and let's say, this is currently at 200 scale. Let me jump it to 210. Okay, first thing you need to do is, that's just a little, I'm looking down. Now I look up. I would probably... Yeah, I'm not going to get into it too much. Uh, I probably wouldn't do that, but let's just cut a little bit more out of here. So that's a fair enough jump cut. So, what about this one? Don't forget I have three. Let's bomb that one out of here, too, because I'm making a point. Well, jump that up by 10%. Whoa! So that's the basic of doing these jump cuts. Now, specifically, let's say I'm going from here. And just, I'm, I'm going to prove a point. I don't want to like, let's say I'm doing this. I wouldn't do this. <laughs> but let's say I'm doing this. That's kind of bad. So I think to answer your question is, how do I make it not look weird? And I'm really over-dramatizing this. Um, 
just to make a point. Almost every editor on the planet will have an effect, and the effect is some sort of cross dissolve. So if I drop that in here, this cross dissolve, see what's happening? So I drop this cross dissolve here, and again, I wouldn't do it like this because it'll get all pixelated, but notice the cross dissolve between the two right here. And notice I'm here and then I jump up here. Well, if I just take and move this dude over here and down here, and I kind of line up where my nose, my eyeballs are, like that, and then I remove the cross dissolve, then it'll look like a separate camera. See what happened there? Because on the point of interest, and they're usually watching the eyeballs, unless they're creepy and watching something else. So I'm usually watching the eyeballs. So let's undo that. What happens is you can just take this thing and uh, put that uh, cross dissolve in there. And then you can play with this and basically move it around till you get the eyeballs about the same. Remove the cross dissolve. And there's your jump cut. And there you go. That's a little bit about doing jump cuts. And I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I hope that helps on the jump cuts. Um, I use them because I don't, this is a personal thing for me. I don't like the jarring uh, ooh, uh, 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 stuff that um, is common on YouTube nowadays. Uh, maybe I'm old school. I like to kind of portray a camera. Uh, a larger camera or something that's a little smooth. Now, I've tested this on my channel. There are some videos where I've tested doing these jump cuts on purpose, testing my channel, and nobody knew. And um, you would see me do something and jump up and jump down and jump up and jump down and jump here and jump there and jump there because I kept doing it more and more because I wanted to see what people's tolerance level was for these jump cuts. Um, it's not a lot. If you do it and you go along and there's a big... They call it a pregnant pause in the video. You can jump to the next cut. That's how you do jump cuts. Thanks for asking the question. Let's go back to the comments and see what we got here. Okay. Hey, man, thanks for stopping by, Tim, and you have to bail now. So the next question I have, which is basically, does anybody <laughs> tapping pencil on desk? I love you, man. You're so cool. I love that you have a sense of humor. Um, does anybody have any questions about YouTube or about creating videos? I don't care how basic they are, but if you have a question um, about YouTube, uh, something that's just perplexing you, don't be afraid. If someone in here makes fun of your question, I will just freaking bounce them out because I will go crazy because I'm that way because I think if people can't ask questions, and people make fun of people who ask questions. And I think the people who make fun of people who ask questions are idiots because they didn't know either. Well, there you go. I said it. Um, any questions about YouTube or any questions about um, possibly video editing or creating your videos that I can help you with? And in the meantime, I'm going to, while I'm waiting for uh, something to come in because there seems to be a uh, lag here, um, I'm going to do a little commercial, um, the commercials for the new YouTube course. I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm trying to make sure that people know that when, um, it's done. I finished the course. I may go through and edit some things. I'm adding some things to the bonus section and it's done. And that course right now for the pre-release people and after I announce it, I'm giving till the, I was going to give a week. But some people were like, ah, I'm giving till February 29th. It is a leap year till 11.59 p.m. to get 80% off that course. And after that, you will not see that course at that price. I guarantee you will not see that price ever again, not even close. The reason being is because if you take that course, you're going to make a minimum of 10 times. There's my commercial for the new YouTube course. Let's see if we got any comments. We got no comments. We got no questions? Really? Wow. Either that or I'm totally disconnected. That wouldn't surprise me because things have not gone well. 
<laughs> so let me check here to see if somebody still is there. Any questions? And I'm going to check my stream to see if where we're at. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know how far behind I'm looking at my stream. This is probably the worst live stream I've ever done. And the next ones will be better, I promise. <laughs> All right. I don't see any questions. I don't see any YouTube questions. I don't see any uh, <clears throat> editing questions. So I have nothing else to say. We're about 45 seconds behind. Excellent. Well, I'm going to give, it's now 227, my time. I'm going to give it another couple minutes, and if anybody has a question about YouTube or anybody has a question about um, something on creating videos, just fire away. If not, I'm okay with that. I don't need to sit here and do a really, really, really long stream. I've answered the questions I want to. I know this guy, <coughs> excuse me, I got something in my throat here. <coughs> I know this guy, his name's Spike. He lives in Australia. Um, cool guy. He lives somewhere out of Perth or, or excuse me, in Australia. He lives by Perth. Um, he lives in a town of like nine people or something out in the middle of nowhere. And this guy does four to five hour long live streams that are just out of this world. And he's got this huge studio set up. It's in freaking sane. All right, let me check this out. Yes, we got some stuff. If you have... See what we say here. From the wiki show, Pedantic Dan, if you have multiple channels on one account, are they still monetized separately? If you have multiple channels on one account, are they still monetized separately? I actually don't know. I have multiple channels but one of them is not monetized which is this channel and the other is <laughs> very monetized I think what happens is let me make sure if you have multiple channels on one account are they still monetized separately I mean the reports are going to be monetized separately um, yeah the money you get paid it's going to come in it's it's adsense through youtube adsense is going to report to you for instance adsense which is how google and youtube monetizes you can use that adsense and you could embed ads on a website for instance you can embed um ads in a blog that you have using adsense and youtube has an, you have an AdSense ID, and when YouTube, at the end of the month, I think they're two months behind. I think I just got paid for like February. I just got paid for November, December. Yeah, they're about two months behind. Um, AdSense will pay you the money. They'll say, here's your money for AdSense, and dump it into your, che your checking account automatically, or they'll send you a check. Um, Although they pay you all in one, I believe you still see when you go into your AdSense account, you get this email that says, okay, your earnings are coming. Here's what you're making when you go into AdSense. You can see I made this much from my blog AdSense. I made this much from my YouTube channel. And I made this much from my other YouTube channel. So you can definitely see a breakdown. But I think they pay you all at once. I could be wrong on that. I need to research that a little more. But I believe you get paid once. All right, let's see what else we got here. How long does the special deal last on the YouTube course? Good question. Um, I thought I answered that before, but that's okay. I, the deal on the YouTube course is it's currently 80% off. What I did was there were some kind-hearted souls one of them is here. 
um, Mr. Worth it or not, who, by the way, you should subscribe to his channel because it's awesome and he deserves a shout out. I redid that course three times, I believe, reshot it two or three or four times, and um, re edited it more times than I can even count. Um, worth it or not, guy, um, he went through and for me, um, went through and reviewed the course, told me some things are a little long, some things are a little that, and made me basically, he didn't make me, I basically decided to redo the course. Um, so what I did was, for the people especially who are part of the university, because um, I always give deep discounts to people who have um, taken paid courses um, over at the university. I also give any updates to those courses, or like when I remake the course, they get the new course for free. Anyway, that's a whole nother deal, I'm not answering your question. So what happened was, I went over to the university students mainly and said, look, I'm going to pre-release this, and I had about 30 or 40 percent of it done. It was supposed to be done mid-January, and I just gave them 80 percent off the course. Um, then I went, okay, when I release this course, which is, I believe, this week, um, no more pre-release price and everything else. There were some people at the university, man, I'm a sucker for people who have taken courses at the university because you're my guys um, and girls. Um, somebody was like, ah, but I want this and I want that. And somebody wanted me to wait till April 15th until they got their taxes back, and I was like, okay, I'm done. So what I did was February 29th at 11.59 and 59 seconds p.m. Um, if you go to the page right now, Basic Filmmaker University, and you click on the YouTube course, you'll see this little timer thing uh, that's counting down the number of days. So you have until February 29th. How about that for a long-winded answer um, to your question? February, I could have just said February 29th. On the next day, March, you won't get it ever again for the rest of eternity, ever at that price. Good. Let's check out the many more questions. Uh, da, 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 da. No questions. I think I know everything. Oh, me too, man. Go, Pappy, go. You know, go, Pappy, and I, we know everything already, and we're the smartest people in the world, and we tolerate other people. It's a joke. He and I have this thing. Um, yeah, I know everything too, except when I don't. Like, <laughs> wait, I, did we just go through a live stream thing that shows I don't know everything? What else we got here? Uh, here's a question about your chair. I'm looking for a comfortable chair for the editing I do. How is your chair? What type is it? <clears throat> oh, man, I made a video on this over on my YouTube channel. It's it's a secret, secret labs. Um, it's an Omega chair, and it's about... I think I have a link in that video or something. I should be prepared with links. I'm not sure if you get a discount with that link or whatever. Anyway, um, the chair was about $359. Now, I've had Herman Miller chairs, and I've had, uh, what's the other place? Um, what's it called? Ugh. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I've had all these expensive chairs, and they usually wear out or they suck. And I finally just went out, and I researched this, and I find out that at least on my research, this may not be true, about 80% of the gamers who sit in their chair 10, 12 hours a day, 16 hours a day, 24 hours a day, they use this chair. Um, the wings on it go this way, they go this way, they go this way, the chair goes up and down, it's hydraulic, it's built well, it's, you can get them in leather, I think this is PU leather, which some, it means something, it means not leather. Um, the chair will go all the way back. It will come back. It's really, 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 really comfortable for me for editing because there are times when I'll spend 10, 12, especially on the YouTube course where I was spending 16, 18 hours a day in here editing. Really comfortable chair. I suggest you check out that video on my other channel. Um, great chair, secret chair, secret labs. No, secret labs. This is the Omega version. It's about 359 and they make... Um, chairs for different heights. 
So you go through and they'll say, are you, and I'm making this up, this isn't true, are you between five foot two and five foot eight? Well, you can get this chair if you're between five foot eight and six foot two, then you can get this chair and I think there's another one above it. So you can pick whatever chair you want. Um, I love this chair. I just by accident always wear, when I'm on camera in here, I always wear this jacket because by accident I picked up this jacket and it kind of matches all the swanky stuff on here. Anyway, that's Secret Labs. It's an Omega chair. I love this thing. I've had it. Has it been about two months now? I swear by this thing. Um, I, in fact, am going to end up buying my wife one of these for her home office because they're just, it's so adjustable and comfortable and all the Herman Miller and stuff that I've spent hundreds, 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 probably a thousand dollars in chairs. They're gone. Love this thing. Thanks for asking. What else we got? <clears throat> uh, do larger, the wiki show, do larger channels have direct contact with YouTube about technical issues? Yeah. Um, there's a certain point where um, I don't know if it's 50,000 or 30,000 or 80 or something like that. If I'm having a problem with YouTube, like I'm having a technical issue or I just I just want to complain, I can click on uh, my icon in the top right. In fact, here, I'll just show you. Let me just show you this, I think. I'm afraid to run up a web page because uh, cause it's, it, it's tending to disconnect when I do this. Let me see if I can show you this. All right, let me go to my YouTube channel. If this takes too long or disconnects me, I'm going to bail. Oh, it's good. So when I go to my YouTube channel here, if I click, ooh, this is the wrong channel. Let's go to me others, another one of my channels. Yeah, just pretend you didn't see all those channels. <laughs> and this video. Stop playing that. If I go up here, um, because I have as many subscribers as I do, and I say, hey, I want some help. Comes up and says, okay, blah, 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 blah. I need more help. Get creator support. I can come down here, da, da, da. Experience an issue, check out our known issues, other resources, yada, 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 yada. And I believe it's here? Oh, so bad. I'm sorry. It's uh, da, da, dun, da, da, dun. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? To see your monetization, copyright, content, channel video, experience an issue. Oh, I think maybe I need to click. Oh, here it is. Dun, da, da, dun. I can request a chat, which I don't want to do. Um, and get a live chat with people on YouTube if they're there. Um, I can also send them an email. What happens is you get this. You send an email to the support team. Let me put this up here. Your name, your last name, your URL, what's going on, what's the specific issue about. You can highlight things and you can submit something to YouTube. And what happens is they usually are pretty good. They'll get back to you in 24 hours. Um, when you have an issue. Now, that being said, there are certain issues I have. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> For instance, oh, I closed it. Oh, bad. Oh, no, I didn't close it. For instance, if you look at my channel here, there's this really cool feature that you eventually get. Let me expand this. There's a really cool feature you get, which is called the Community tab. In the community tab, you can post a video and a poll and an image, and you can put stuff on here, and then it's really cool, and you can interact with your people, and YouTube pushes the hell out of this, and so do the large creators for YouTube because YouTube puts them on the YouTube channel, which has a bazillion, and it's really cool. Well, the problem with this is... Um, I don't get any notifications whatsoever when I put something on here that someone's commented, which really just kind of sucks. <laughs> I mean, it just, 
it's not useful for me at all. So what I did was I wrote Creator Support, I highlighted the page, I said, this sucks. Um, my channel is all about communicating with people. I communicate to every comment and everything else. And they wrote back and said, we understand. It's just not, they basically said, I won't go through the whole thing. They basically said, that's not what we're gonna be working on right now. Um, we do occasionally email uh, people on the community tab. We do occasionally um, email people who aren't subscribed to your channel on what you posted on the community tab. Um, and we have no plans to enable notifying you when someone comments. So I wrote back and basically said that sucks because I answer every comment. Um, the whole thing about it is communicating. Now YouTube makes a big deal out of this community tab and they get all these big YouTubers to come on and say, whoopee, the community tab. Um, the point is, is just because you have that in with YouTube does not mean they're going to listen to you or they're going to do something. Now, if you have a technical issue, um, yeah, you can get some pretty fast turnaround from YouTube as a creator that has a lot of subscribers, um, that produces videos. I mean, you're legit now and YouTube's like, okay, we're going to pay attention to you. Uh, if you want that, just grow your channel and get a lot of subscribers and stuff. I hope that answers your question. Let's see what else we got. Looking at signing up middle of this month, checking if will st still be available. Thanks, worth it or not, thanks. Cool. Curtis Judd is in the house. Yo, Curtis Judd is in the house. <clears throat> oh, I'm so glad you just showed up, dude. You would have been laughing your behind off at the beginning of this video because everything went wrong. <laughs> everything. <clears throat> You know why Curtis checks in, he wants to check in if I'm listening to him and doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing on my audio. Not really. I love Curtis, and I'm going to see him at NAB, and we're going to have fun, and he's awesome. Thanks for coming, man. Um, let's see. Landshark checking in. Hey, dude. Hi. How are you? I would need the one above it. I'm not sure what. Um, go Pappy. Only because I watch your courses, that's why I know so much. Now I'm not kidding. Hey, thanks, man. Um, really like it. When you opened up your web browser, your stream dropped down to 480p. Soon as your page finished loading, it went back to 1080p. Well, thank you for that. Wow. I guess leaving web pages open and trying to load stuff is bad. Wow. Captain Jack, the guy up here who you guys just checked in, Captain Jack, who apparently on YouTube has done over 5,000 hours of live streaming. That's a guy to listen to. What do you think of Vimeo, Daily Motion, etc.? Yeah, you bet, Wiki. Um, Curtis Judd, live streaming is hard. Yeah, tell me about it, dude. I'll get back to this thing. I am probably going to go down the, I, I told you about this uh, iSpike guy who does Saturday live streams for five solid hours. And he has like five cameras and smoke and motorcycles and all this stuff. Um, even Curtis does a really good job. He has one of those switchers. I think I'm going to get into that. There are things I can't do. I, I'm le still learning this. Um, there's things I can't do. I'd like to put some music on before the live stream occurs. I'd like to be able to switch easier. I'd like to do effects. I'd like to do those cool, like I have this for my comments. Curtis, he's also using Ecamm on a Mac, um, has these cool things and like the comments come up. I want all that because it's cool. Um, it's hard, this live streaming stuff. Maybe it gets easier, but for me right now it's hard. And to me that just means I need to do more of it, learn more about it, and watch other people who are really good at it. Um, like Captain Jack who's done 5,000 and iSpike who's done thousands of hours of this stuff and Curtis who has that cool switching switcher thing which I'm going to get one of those after I go to NAB man because there's no way I'm going to let Curtis have cooler stuff than me <laughs> that's a joke I play this game with Curtis um, because I do anyway back to the question which was uh, what do I think about Vimeo daily motion compared to YouTube 
<sighs> I <clears throat> Vimeo is very odd. Um, I, 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 it's not YouTube. It's definitely not YouTube. It's definitely not come to me and subscribe to me and watch me. There is some really cool, excellent, mind blowing creative stuff over there. I think it's more for filmmakers to share their stuff or to put their portfolio up and stuff like that. Maybe one day I'll do that. Um, I probably spent two, three, four years on Vimeo doing the same thing and testing this. Post a video to YouTube, post the same to Vimeo. Everything's the same. YouTube, Vimeo, YouTube, Vimeo. I have hundreds of um, videos over there. You don't get the same traction whatsoever out of your videos. You get 12 views or 15 views and some people will follow you or maybe not. I do like posting things on Vimeo. I think YouTube has changed this because if I ever want to go grab one of my YouTube videos, one of my videos I made, I can go up there and I can download it in the same format that I uploaded it in, which is really cool. It costs money per year. Um, there's no advertising that I know of. That's why it costs money per year and why YouTube doesn't. Daily Motion, personal opinion. Um, I put some videos on Daily Motion. It did nothing for me. Um, I know Daily Motion. I don't know this. I've seen Daily Motion where some videos get a lot of views, but they're kind of weird. Also, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of not good stuff on um, Daily Motion. I mean, there's some like stuff on there, and Daily Motion's like, we don't care. Post whatever you want. Same on Vimeo. I think on Vimeo, you can get into some like pretty racy like oh my god stuff um and i kind of don't like that that's my personal opinion if you're like whatever into that i don't even want to get into that discussion but it's kind of like ooh. um but vimeo is good uh if you're if you want to like put your portfolio up there some people also use vimeo instead of having youtube and it's all branded and the youtube banner in the bottom and this and subscribe and everything else. Some people will post unlisted without all the YouTube ads and everything else, their videos over on YouTube and then they'll embed them in their courses. So that way when you're delivering a course, let's say you have your own website, well, you don't wanna go through and develop your own video mechanism or buy some third party Vimeo mechanism or some part, excuse me, some part of delivery system like I think it's Wistia. Um, you get charged a lot of money for that. So they'll pay their $99 or $150 or whatever year to have a Vimeo place to upload their videos unlisted. And then on their course pages or their blog pages or whatever, then they'll just embed those and they don't get all the ads and the other crap. Those are my opinions on that. They are opinions. Um, I think Vimeo has its place for certain people. Uh, Daily Motion. It's an opinion. I don't like it. I don't go there. I don't like to hang out in places where they think it doesn't matter what you do and it doesn't matter what you post. It's all okay and everybody can do whatever they want. I, I'm okay with that, but that doesn't mean I have to go there. That's my answer to that. It's hard to find stuff on Vimeo. Yeah, that answer it. Hey, you bet. Uh, live streaming is hard. The ATEM Mini looks to be a really cool device to switch and do picture in picture. I kind of want one. I have been looking at this. I think Curtis, I'm not sure if Curtis, was it Curtis who did this, was looking at the ATEM Mini? I'm not sure. Um, I think he may, may have been doing that. Um, it was, <coughs> excuse me, I... I did something really bad to my throat um, last night and today, and so I have this voice. Um, I really do want to check that out. I want to go search Google and pull it up right now, but I know it's going to kill my stream for some reason. Hard to find stuff on Vimeo. Yeah, it is. I post a Vimeo. I post a Vimeo that get booted from YouTube because of copyright issues. Huh. Yeah, I could see that. 
like if you're doing stuff to uh, Vimeo, they don't have a lot of mechanisms in place, at least that I know of. I don't know if they've changed or not. They're not as big as YouTube, so they're not going to be attacked by the FTC. Um, but yeah, you can put stuff over on Vimeo that you, you wouldn't normally otherwise be able to post on YouTube. Why? Because you're not advertising. So that's where the problem gets into YouTube is they are advertising in and around stuff. And so there's this idea that on YouTube, you or YouTube is making money from it. So if I include something that is copyrighted, like a clip of a movie or something like that, um, well, I'm not making any money of it off of it over on Vimeo. Like there's no that I know of, there's no way to make money unless you have the, there's something else on there where you can't, you know, making money of it. So they can't say anything really about it, um, to a large degree. And so, yeah, that's another good reason to do it. You can post stuff on Vimeo that, um, YouTube doesn't like. Uh, so that's one thing to do. Good point, Captain Jack. Uh, Vimeo bought the live stream service, live stream, then raised the price. I don't know anything about that. Um, I know nothing about it. I am actually have had Vimeo for years. <clears throat> um, there are other properties that are on Vimeo that I was a part of that I am still bounded by threat of death, not to say I was part of um, that are up there. So I'm glad they're up there. Uh, I'm going to let my Vimeo thing expire. It's doing me nothing. And it was actually kind of a waste of time and taking me away from my YouTube stuff. Um, I noticed over here, Curtis said that uh, he is the ATM mini. Yep, for sure. Uh, for sure. Curtis, I think he has, um, go look at his channel, his main channel, Curtis Judd. And I think he talks, or maybe it's the Curtis Judd audio. He talks about the ATM mini, if I remember that video correctly. It's a cool video. Um, I'm hearing a lot of noise about that. When I go to NAB in April, uh, I'm going to be checking this thing out because I'm kind of tired of, I'm kind of hobbled together this, you know, great computer, great screen, this little tiny stream deck. I got the Mix Pre 3. I got the right microphone and all this stuff, but it's kind of hobbled together and it works. But when you start switching and want to do all these fancy things, it doesn't, it doesn't work for me at all. So some of these I'm going to resell or make go away or donate to someone. Oh, here come the comments. Donate to me. Anyway, go check out Curtis's thing. Just type in ATM Mini Curtis Judd and you'll find something. Because um, he happens to know a few things about audio and live streaming. And uh, if you aren't subscribed to Curtis's channel, I don't know what's wrong with you. I'm joking. What else we got? Uh, Rob Track, hey man, hi Kevin, I wanted to thank you for your tutorials from three plus years ago that helped me start my channel. Oh, thanks man. I, um, Curtis and I did an interview a while ago, and one of the things that was cool, I, I interviewed him, he interviewed me, mine sucked, his was awesome, but one of the things that we both were talking about is how we love to help people. I mean, our purpose is to help people despite the money, despite the this, despite the that, we love to help other people. And I'll tell you, man, when I, it sounds kind of like, I don't know what the word is. There's a word for that. I don't want to try. When I try words, I usually come out with something that means something else and I get in a lot of trouble. My wife has told me not to do that. Um, sappy. It sounds kind of sappy and I just, it like freaking melts my heart when I see stuff like this. Um, Unknown to me, some guy, this was a year, two years ago, some guys just all of a sudden sent me an email and said, hey, I watched all your videos. They helped me a lot. Um, I was in a really crappy job. Um, I was able to buy a camera, stuff like that, and learn it. And I ended up getting a job with, was it Verizon? One of these companies um, based upon that because I could demonstrate my skill to them. And I was hired with them to uh, do their uh, their internal videos and trainings and stuff like that. And I have a whole new career, and uh, thank you. Oh, oh, my God. That, mm, that 
that's why I do it. You may not think that. That's why I do it. Probably wondering why I sell courses because I have to eat. <laughs> Thank you, man. Really seriously. Um, what is your internet speeds? Wondering if that has an effect on our live streams. Yeah, that's another thing I need to work on. I have currently 100 up and down, um, but my 100 up and down is down that away. So I have a repeater over here. Um, that repeater comes over to here. And then between here and there, I have more um, like this HDMI sitting here, transmitter. I have more stuff flying around that could interrupt that and you could shake a stick at. What I need to do is I just need to run a hard line from my um, files line, which is actually right down here, straight up here, and then I can direct connect. Uh, into the internet, and I don't have to deal with all that stuff. I think that is definitely part of the problem. Thanks, man. Um, Kevin told me to go buy a power cable for my camera after we burned through. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, he, he was having battery problems. I, I'm way behind Curtis on this live thing. If you go over to Curtis Judd Audio... Again, I was planning on having links, and I could go to the internet, and I could paste them in here, and you could just click. But if you go to the Curtis Judd Audio channel, he's like ten or 11,000 subscribers over there. Um, and he's done a ton of live streaming. So this is a while ago, but he was, again, he with his experience, he kept running out of batteries during his live stream. So the joke is, I was like, why don't you just buy a freaking AC adapter, dude? Um, and I think he did. <laughs> Uh, thanks for the gear suggestion, Curtis Judd. Absolutely. Mackenzie Evan Martz. Oh, my gosh. Mackenzie is, and then I'll read her comment. Mackenzie is an awesome, awesome, awesome lady. She's got two, I think, three kids now. She has a great husband. She does, um, she has the best name for a company. I've ever heard, and I love it whenever I hear it. It's called For the Honor Productions. She does wedding videos and has been forever. Um, anyway, more on that later. Let's see. I'd like to throw in some Vimeo stuff. Vimeo does pull copyright claims and will take videos down immediately if it's caught by the algorithm. I didn't know that. Last year, a lot of people in the wedding video, yeah, see, world had all their vids pulled even they had purchased the rights to use the music that was copyrighted. Oof. Ah, for kids. Wow. I thought I bought two. Yeah, Mackenzie, I didn't know that. That's cool. And there's an example of, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a wedding a videographer. You should look at her stuff. Like, Google for the Honor Productions and go look at her, some of her videos. They're just spec. I'd, I'd hire her for my wedding, but if I was having a wedding, I wouldn't be alive because then my wife would kill me. <laughs> um, but I could see, I'm just thinking right now with her here, I could see where you'd be posting your videos, not on YouTube for your wedding people, but if people wanted to share it and everything else, you'd post it up on Vimeo. But I didn't know there was all this background stuff. I wonder if that has to do with all the uh, FTC regulations and the kids and stuff like that. So thanks for chiming in on that. I didn't know that. What do we got happening over here? Curtis, I bought two and they cost me 129 bucks. What the heck? For your AC adapters? Wow. Kevin, you are an expensive friend. Oh, now wait a second, my friend. I cost you 129 bucks. Wait. Each. Boo -hoo. All right. Should I go through and um, talk about the nearly $400 microphone that I bought here, the SM7B, because of Curtis Judd? Links are below in the description. Or the not one but two Mix Pre 3s I bought that are nearly $700 a piece because of Curtis Judd. Or. I won't go on. I'm joking with them. Um, 
I'm responsible for what I buy, but uh, but I bought him because he was right. This is a great podcast, a live stream. This is a great mic. Is it the best? I don't know. Um, is it awesome? It is awesome. And when I'm sitting here doing tutorials and stuff and running it into my Mix Pre 3, uh, I don't have to worry about audio. The same with my uh, studio over there when I'm doing um, on camera, those, you know, you see the brick wall thing and everything else. I have my Rode NTG3 sitting up there. I don't use the NTG5 or another mic because it works with my voice. It doesn't mean you should go out and use an NTG3. I'm just telling you it works perfectly with my voice. So I record up there. I hit the mix pre-3. I don't need to worry about noise. The preamps are awesome. Uh, everything's awesome about those. So thank you, Curtis, for those suggestions. And you've cost me a lot of money, so don't talk to me about $129. <laughs> <laughs> How funny. Uh, Mackenzie, they all switched over to YouTube. Well, isn't that interesting? Oh, thanks. Itty meant I had four kids. Wait. Four? One, two. Oh, that's right. One, two, three, and the new baby. So she has four kids. So she's a real mom to the power of 10. And she runs her own business. So there you go. Whew. I salute you, madam. I used to, when my youngins were really small, um, I had no idea I was such a naive father. This is back in the days when fathers just went and worked and moms stayed at home and raised kids. And my wife left for, I was like, go ahead, leave for a week. You need a break? Sure. This was after about, I think it was two years. So I had a two-year-old and a four-year-old. She was gone for a week, and I swear she was gone for a year. I, uh, when she came home, uh, uh, she walks on water. Any mom that has one, two, three, four kids is a god. They're like... When I see a mom and like, what do you do? I'm a housewife. I stay at home with the kids. I just, I, here's the red carpet. You're a god. Oh, I salute you, ma'am. Uh, let's see. I have 150 down and 10 up. I'm hardwired, but my outdoor camera is Wi-Fi on the 5 gigahertz band. I'm going to look into fiber when I get 100 to 100 to see if that fixes my issues. Yeah, I, um, I'm i living in Oregon, and I forget who the company is. They came along and said, hey, we offer 100 up, 100 down, and it'll cost you um, like $10 more a month, but we're running a special. Anybody who signs up for the first three months will charge you $20 less. And I'm like, well, yeah. Um, and now they're doing something with 150 up and down. I don't think I need that much. But what I was using was like 20, no, 30 up and 10 down. And when I switched to 100 and up and 100 down, holy smokes, I upload a video when I'm directly connected to YouTube. It's amazing. Uh, Panasonic. Oh, Panasonic. Right. Uh, for the GH5, I think it is. Uh, yeah, for Panasonic. Yeah, that's what you get for buying Panasonics. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't give Curtis so much crap. I joke around with him a lot. I, I love Curtis, but I shouldn't give him so much crap because he's more fit than I am. He's taller than I am. He's better built than I am, and he could probably pick me up and throw me into the next universe with one of his little fingers. So I should be... I think my lucky star is that Curtis is just a nice guy. Um, yeah, Panasonic. Um, by the way, Curtis, are you going to ever buy that? What was it, a C200, Mark II, or a C300? <laughs> what do we got? Um, the Vimeo poll was because they don't have a blanket license agreement with record companies like YouTube does. YouTube has an agreement to let copyrighted stuff on there, depending on the label studio, and can send your ad revenue to the record label instead of you. I just looked into this today because I was curious. 
Um, somebody, some viewer asked me a question, sent me an email back and this and copyrights and all this. And also I put up some stuff on demonetization and stuff like that on my new um, YouTube course. And uh, which the 80% discount ends February 29th. And um, I'm such a bad salesman. <laughs> I'm not a salesman. And uh, I, because I, I was curious, how do these people put albums up? Um, how do these people like rip albums up there and do stuff like this? And I found out that unless it's Beatles or something like that, it's actually legit. I posted a video. I covered this in my YouTube course. I posted a video from my brother. He has been a musician forever and he found this, uh, old footage that was shot on. I don't know what it was shot on and wanted me to upload it to YouTube so he could share it with some of the other band members he used to hang with. And it were, they were cover songs, various cover songs. And I got slammed with copyright stuff. And at first I was like, oh no. But then they were like, hey, it's okay. Um, don't worry about it. Uh, the copyright owners uh, just want to do that. So if we advertise around the video that they are properly paid for their stuff. And I was like, well, that's kind of cool. I like that. I mean, if I wrote some music and made some music or I did a video or something else and somebody else used it, I kind of want to get paid for that. That's how I eat. That's how I make my money. Um, and the other thing that I'm still looking at is apparently you can do covers. Again, if you go down Beatles land, I've heard, I don't know this, that they're pretty like, um, YouTube has this deal with these companies where you can put up certain types of music, as long as they're not like the Beatles. I think the Beatles is the big one. You can put up music and albums and stuff like that. Then they'll say, hey, this is a copyright notice. They flag it. Um, these little bots come out. And then what they do is they show all the music. So any ad revenue that is made off of that goes to, is divvied out to those people. And you still get to get some of that ad revenue. I don't know how much it is. I don't know what your take is on that. But apparently you can still make ad revenue on uploading or covering other people's music. It kind of blew my mind. Captain Jack, very interesting. Mackenzie, Evan Martz. I think I'll look into more about those subscription services for my background music. Sadly, I've done a few personal videos that were flagged. I like using sound stripe and music bed. I know Kevin recommends premium beat. I recommend premium beat. <clears throat> and the re only reason I recommend premium beat for music, it's about, I don't know if they'll sell a subscription. I don't know if it's 20 something, 19, 39, something like that. You can get deals with them is because their music's really good. But in seven years, I have never, ever, ever, ever gotten flagged on using that music video on Vimeo, on YouTube, on other services, um, ever. There's never been a question ever about that. Other services I've used, I'm not going to mention who they are. Um, I have gotten flagged. Now, I was able to contest it with YouTube. You pull down a little thing and say, hey, uh, this is my music. Uh, I bought it from these people and it's okay. I have been flagged. It's not a big deal. But the good things I've heard about is Music Bed, really good, that she recommends. Um, what was the other one? Soundstripe, I'm not familiar with that. Um, Premium Beat, I know, I think it's artlist.io. I do use them from time to time. They have some good music up there. Um, and also, there's a huge... Not that it's great, um, but there's a huge YouTube library. I'm not going to run off the page right now and show you. There's a huge YouTube library of music if you're willing to go in in your channel and look for it. And you can download, I think it's MP3s. You can download any of it. I mean, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of songs. They're not going to be the quality of music bed. They're not going to be the quality of Soundstripe. Um, they're not definitely not going to be the quality of premium beat. Uh, but YouTube has a huge music library and you will never get flagged on that ever. If you do get flagged using one of these music companies, 
they'll send you something and you'll be like, oh no, they're flagging in the music and the copyright and everything else. You pull down a little menu next to it. You say, I can test it. You say, I have a subscription with these guys. And then they go back to those people and they say, well, we have 30 days for them to respond. And then they have another 30 days. It's all whatever, legal, schmeagle, blah, blah, blah. It usually takes a couple of days. Um, and then you're fine. And if you think you're losing demonetization or you're losing, you know, money on that, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's not anything to worry about. Let's see what else we got here. Great. Well, let me see what I'm going here. Oh, my gosh. I just went over the hour mark. I was going to try and keep it in a half an hour. Um, I think we're about a minute behind. I don't know if anybody's going to have any more comments shoot out. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me. Uh, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me and asking questions. And thank you for supporting my YouTube channel, my unscripted channel, the university. I really could not. You really got to, like, get this viewpoint, um, and I'm sure Curtis knows this. We could not do what we do without you uh, supporting us, checking out our courses, promoting us, sharing us, um, watching our videos, subscribing to us, uh, hanging out with us. We could not do this um, at all. So big, I don't know if I could do this. I've never done this. That's a heart. <laughs> big heart to you guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me, and we will see you next time.